yeah, this, this um, terrifies me more than talking about anything else. I think I feel quite different to the, the session that I did last week on, that was about anger. This, this one terrifies me and I'm not sure why. Um, but I have this sense of wanting to, wanting to really move together with it. It's like some of the things I'm gonna, some of the things I'm gonna say feel, on one level they seem quite obvious, but I want, I wanna make sure that you really get what I mean. I know that I didn't get what I meant like over the years, like it just didn't fully land for me. But then when I come to say these things now, it's like, well, duh, like that's pretty obvious. That's not going to be a very exciting lecture for people. Mm -hmm. But the, the first, the first theme I'd like to start with is it feels like, um, something happened for me in my in coming into my last relationship where it was like i wasn't looking i wasn't looking for something um hang on a sec just letting someone else in yeah there was some way that i wasn't looking to be completed and that sounds really cliche and like if I said this to myself before it'd be like yeah obviously but it was like it felt like I was coming from quite a, a brutal truth about life of like no one's gonna complete me um no one's gonna do anything for me like I might as well just be alone and there was something about coming from that place that felt 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 and still feels like so freeing that it feels like a foundation from there is like yeah everything can happen because i don't i don't have these expectations of a romantic dream or like it just seems that very easily in in romantic partnership there, there can be all these like we can get tight around that partner not doing the things that they should be and well we're not getting our needs met and and there was just something where I just came in of just like, and I think I can sense that when I work with people, like when people are in that place of, of wholeness or not. And like some, a lot of stuff really had to die in me to, to get to that place. Like I'd, it was just, yeah, it was, it was painful to get to that place. But then from that place, it was like, oh, I can, I can build something up now. And from that place, I can actually like focus on loving because when I get super triggered, which I do and we all do at certain times in romantic partnership, it's like, what have I got to fall back on? What have I got to fall back on? Like, oh, I want to, I want to be loving in general in the world. So I want to try and own my experience and take responsibility for what's happening in me, even though it's like really against the grain and really, really hard to do that. It's like, well, what do I come back to? Like, I'm just going to be humble and loving and, and try and love this person. How does this land for people like do you have any does it make sense do you have any questions do you have any like like does it touch anything in you and maybe you can i think you can feel free to write in the chat as well as share go camilla i think it's a place that i would like to come from in romantic relationships but at the same time, when I'm triggered and this uh, insecurity or feeling of um, 
wanting something, uh, confirmation or the feeling of being loved, um, then I'm at that point, I'm not coming from that place. And, and to reach to, to back to that place where I feel whole in myself and that I don't need something from outside, I, I find that's the, that's the difficult part because in my mind and, and in my, in the way I look at things, I really agree. I think it's a good place to come from, but at the same time, when I'm triggered, then it's like the, the emotional brain takes over. Um, and to, to be in that place and, and not be um, totally um, engulfed in that place, and to still have space around that um, and know that another person is not supposed to give me this feeling of being loved. Um, that's that's the, the challenge to, to have that both, both parts inside of me meet, both the little child inside and the wisdom that I can contain myself and I don't really need this other person to do it for me. Yeah, it's well, well said, well put. I, I, I keep getting this sense of like there needs to be a death of some kind in us to, to be able to live from that place more and more. And then, um, go, go for it. Yeah, I also realized that um, you can say this when you're alone, <laughs> but when you're in a relationship, things come up anyhow. Some kinds of attachments, I mean, some kind of attachment is healthy, otherwise you have, or just uh, dissociated, I guess. But then, I wouldn't call it that, maybe there's a part that has to die, but another part also has to be able to be with the pain that the full, um, oh, my English, <laughs> um, that the full, your longing has to be complete, it cannot be in the relationship with an other, but only with relationship with yourself. And that is something positive, but you have, I, I need to focus on, I need to be aware of again and again, that the first most important relationship is it my deepest self or with God, whatever, but this truth also has to be held up front somehow. <laughs> that this comes first. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And only from that I can relate to the other. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it just seems that being in a romantic partnership, it it so many things can get in the way of the of of that. And that's what makes it such a challenge, but also of like the act of actually connecting in the moment. Like that was a big realization for me of like starting to get this sense of connection or not. And that actually this is something that I can do from the moment. So it's like my sense is that being in a romantic partnership, often all these things will come up that stop us actually just connecting in the moment. And it, it gets really challenging to connect in the moment because we are, are often the things that are actually true for us might not feel suitable to, um, to share. And also they might, they might not feel suitable and they are suitable to share and you just need to over and over again have the courage to just be this is my truth i still love you and this is yeah i'm, I'm just feel disgust at you right now so there's that this muscle of just being willing to just keep revealing keep revealing this is my truth with you in connection and, and i'm here and i'm present and this is it and it's really hard to share because i want to be so much better than this i don't want to be feeling like a little boy like right now, I want to be this strong man or whatever it is. That seems a really important muscle that is hard enough in everyday life, in any relationship, but in intimate partnership, it's like there's all this other baggage or expectations that we can have on ourselves of who we should be and how we should be. 
sometimes I call I call them sexpectations. Right. After after sex, I have expectations. You know, it's, they, they, I don't even know what they are until I find them. I like landmine, mine peel, and I step on one. Then I realize, oh my gosh, I have that expectation. Didn't know. Hmm. But I think it's so difficult in the romantic relationship because that's where the fear is the biggest or that's the place where there are most to, to lose or the rejection would be worse than in other relationships. Yeah. So that's where it's, it's so difficult to be your worst self or the parts of you that you really struggle with. this this first part like i've got a few different themes for the evening and this theme that it feels that we've been in for these 10 minutes it feels like in a way destroying the idea of the romantic dream or like really destroying all the things that we come in with which i'm going to balance on the opposite side later on with like attachment and healthy attachment and all our needs and stuff but this this bit feels important to just blow, to blow something up like so that we can come back to being present to ourselves and like loving to the other and connecting with the other beyond these other expectations chris yeah there's something about the um for me the rush or the the fog of my expectations in a new relationship that like is so sweet and rare for me that I'm in no hurry to blow that up. Like I already know it's got a limited shelf life and I know what my life is like when that feeling isn't there. Cause it's usually like that. So like, I, I notice, like I, I'm wanting to like appreciate it while it's here. I'm kind of on the tail end of that now, and it's starting to settle. And uh, it's, yeah, there's just something so sweet that I that I like about it. <laughs> I want to stay in relationship with it, you know, and savor it even as it's slipping through my fingers, you know, the the, the disillusion. That feels like it contradicts me, but it just, I'm just like, yeah, I could be arguing that and just love you sharing that. Is, is there any more like questions or thoughts about this theme before we have a look at another? What I find challenging is when I try to connect in the moment and the partner or whoever it is doesn't want to connect. So that feels so challenging for me. And whenever I tell myself, I'm just, I come from that loving and whole place. And in these moments I realize, oh damn, I, I don't. I, I, I want this connection and when I don't get it, it feels just horrible. Mm. Yeah, it makes me just become more aware of like the nuances of this whole theme. Um, Of like the whole theme of, of love in romantic partnerships, like how many kind of variables there are. And because when, when you first mentioned it, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe you actually want to be with someone who is like more available for connection. Like it maybe it made, it made me think like, oh, maybe there isn't aligned this relationship. So then like that 
that is another added complication of like, oh, is it that or is it like, no, I'm not, I'm not actually being as whole as I could be. And both seems to be right in a way. Hmm. I'm just noticing the other people here and wanting to welcome everyone and appreciate the contribution so far. And I've got a nice feeling of like exploring this together, and wanting your wanting your input, and in particular, like just on this first theme, is the is the more is the more like that you need to for it to be clear to you, or like is, are you left with something after what I've shared? Well, to me, it feels like that there's a, a part in me that just doesn't want to let go of that dream of that night. Um, as if I, I, I hold on to that. I, it's like also a, an angry little girl who deserves that, you know, uh, deserves love. Or, I can't explain it, but, um, but like resistance. And I, I know the other part is the, the place to come home to in myself, be done, I know that. And, uh, okay. and at the same time, sometimes in the past. It, it makes me um, curious, like, if that is something that is something that you could learn to let go of, or if that's actually like something that could take you towards what you want. Wow. Yeah, you're saying that it's like, oh, I, um, I your microphone's yeah. microphone scraping, I think, on your scarf. Um, yeah, it, it feels like saying with what I'm worth of, like believing in the not going for less. Also, it's like there's a part of just like that is there too, like not settling for less. Mm, then I feel I am worth it. There's still a crackling coming from your, uh, maybe it's not yours. If, if people could mute when they're not speaking, that would be cool. Did you understand me? I did understand you, yeah. I try not to move. I'd, I'd like to explore this a bit with you in reference to the next theme I wanted to bring, which is, which is around like willingness to receive love and willingness to actually be in a seriously beautiful romantic partnership. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm curious how you all are. Like, maybe you could just try that on now. Like, so what I mean by willingness is if, if you were to be graced with this thing, if it was just to be available, would you, are you a yes to it in your life? Are you a yes to it happening? So if you imagine the, a, a super fulfilling, beautiful, part loving partnership, are you willing to have that in your life? Like what, what comes up in you? Is there a like, hell yeah. Or is there a like, is there resistance? 
Or is there like, yeah, maybe you could, maybe you could say in the chat, like what, if, if you notice something. Can I say something also? Yeah. When you say it, I feel like, oh yes. But when I feel in my body, I feel such a huge resistance. Oof. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I know like deeply I'm like, yes, of course, it's yes. But oof, <laughs> it's so scary. Or I have to believe it's it's scary because I feel vulnerability. I feel vulnerable. Do you hear me well? Really well. Yeah. Okay. And, and what you shared, I think, is, is, I imagine, is pretty common. Like people really, really wanting an re intimate relationship. And then when, it's, when it comes to it, like, if you're really willing to receive love, it's, it's terrifying for quite a lot of people, I think. Is it really the, the, the love is terrifying, or is it the projection, the fear of loss of it? That's what it feels more like for me. Yes, it's scary to get into it because of the, the fear that sometimes comes up about losing it. Thank you for saying it. I don't know if your name is Katja. No, it's Kelly. Okay. <laughs> but close enough. Thank you for saying that. And I think that's also part, but I, if I speak for me, it's um, already to, I feel the openness the openness to receive just feels scary because I, f I just feel really vulnerable for this love to receive. Yeah. Right now, eh? <laughs> Can be different another time. We'll do a practice a bit on this later on, which it, it probably touches us all in our attachment dynamics or like in the specifics, maybe fear of abandonment or fear of overwhelm. Or, so it's, it's beautiful to hear the, the subtle differences and similarities between you so far. And just want to check if anyone is like, is anyone, did anyone struggle to do that practice or like, have a, is anyone not on board with where we are right now? Or is people on board and want to share more? Yeah, I, I just want to share if that's okay. Um, I guess for me, I, I resonate with Eva, like it's like woo, <laughs> too much opening. If I, from my position now, imagine to be fully loved. And it's like a process of small drips letting in. And uh, recently I came across the seven layers as a way to slowly go deeper with each other, um, like layer after layer. And that feels like a very safe way to, ch to transform from the present state into a deeply loving state. <laughs> so it can't go immediately, it has to grow and you have to um, constantly check like, and reveal, as you said, John. So in that process, it can grow and you can slowly open, but not immediately. That's for sure. Yeah, that it, it feels like this practice is useful just in and of itself to help you to actually open to love and to open to the possibility of deeper romantic partnership. And what what relates to what you just said or what where I agree or where it was in my notes, it's like, yeah, and we're gonna struggle to receive love and therefore just just our ability to connect with our partner of like, wow, I'm not able to receive that or well, this is actually too much love right now and like you'd be playful with that and for that to be be okay and you're still actually loving because you're connecting and there's a it's not like we have to be completely able to receive love the whole time but it's it's working that muscle and then all, always coming back to yeah and we can connect from whatever's happening in us
any more on, on this? Any, any other shares or questions? Um, hi. Hey. Hi. Um, yeah, I've been noticing, it's actually coming up for me today, that um, on a conscious level, I feel like I'm really hankering after that deep intimacy, that deep love. And yet, if I actually look around at my life, what I'm doing is blocking it. And I'm blocking it through, like, pushing for it all the time. Like, can we connect? Can we connect? Do you want to hang out? Spend time with me. And then I'm also blocking it by, like, by the time she's ready to hang out with me, I'm like, fuck you then. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, you took too long. <laughs> And so I'm never getting the thing that I actually want. And it's, it's kind of just, yeah, devastating, actually, to be stuck in this perpetual wanting, longing, pushing, asking, and then pushing away because I've just got too dysregulated or whatever. Um, I notice it's not actually just in my romantic relationship it's also with pretty much everything my friendships and with my kids and there's like something in the way of really receiving that love and I can relate to it feeling frightening but I'm not really sure why whether it's the opening or whether it's the fear of losing I don't really know it's just underneath kind of panic like life is frightening too much to take in or something but like please I need it I'm dying over here I'm shriveling up I need that thing <laughs> yeah bit of a predicament mm. really appreciate that share mm. It makes me think of like survival strategies that we've we developed to um, to survive for when like intimate connection of certain kinds was not safe for us. And something about the awareness that you have on this now feels nourishing, like that you're, there's consciousness coming to it, that there's going to be opportunity to, to not be as caught in it and actually be able to connect from those dynamics starting to happen. It feels really refreshing to not be victimised by the kind of rejection and the not getting what I need and actually take responsibility for the fact that I am making this happen. I'm causing the lack of connection. Um, I th yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of dating someone, but I don't know if I'm dating someone because uh, she just she wants to cut contact for three weeks, um, and that has been quite rough. And at the same time, I'm also struggling with being with myself, and also in 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 hearing about receiving love. Um, Yeah, I, th I think it's been also more difficult to receive or to receive this from other people. I kind of, because she suddenly withdrew kind of in my perception. And I'm ha I guess I'm having quite a difficult time with it. Um, 
I also tend to block out the love that I get from others. Like I do realize that there's a lot of appreciation for me and also a lot of friends that are really close, but then it suddenly becomes harder to, um, yeah, to, to feel that and to, I guess, feel myself. And, and and just kind of like Roma said, I also realized that that what is happening is also exactly what, what is pushing my date away. That has sometimes, in, in some sense, become so focused on her and a bit maybe latched onto her. Um, yeah, that I'm no longer so open to other other loving connections. Hmm. Yeah, and, and still I find it very difficult. There's there's things I want and and in in the past few months I've really struggled with realizing that some people simply fell away. Where I where I'm very much like, but the things we did, the moments we shared, they were amazing. Why is this person suddenly no longer seemingly interested in being with me? Yeah, that that just simply not understanding that and 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 uh, I don't know, it it confuses me and it makes me latch on to people even more. Would you like my some reflection of, of listening to you? The the first thing that you shared it felt I felt really significant, like I felt really warm inside me of like, wow, that sounds true of like there's some way that you're not receiving in the way that you could. Like from from life and from people. And it, it just feels like, like this might sound harsh or something, but it's like if, if that's the lesson for you or something like wow, there's, there's a chance to receive so much from life and from people. Like it's almost like in this struggle that's, that's painful that I, I empathize with, it's almost like, wow, but if, if that's what this is pointing towards, then it's, it's worth it or something. Is yeah, there, I can, uh, hmm? and then the opportunity to re to relate from this place of wholeness and fullness, where there's no need to latch. It's like then there's this sense that something can really be generated. Yeah, it, uh, it feels a bit like getting stuck between a rock and a hard place, because I realize it's true. But I also, in this moment where I've just, I'm looking at a lot of, well, I, to, dramat, to dramatize it a bit, call it abandonment, to also be allowed to feel a lot of this insecurity and share this, a lot of this insecurity and, and being very, I don't know what to say, I don't know how much uh, I can share with this person or it feels like sometimes burdening this person. Um, I, I also, I'd also very much like that for that to, to be there and be able to be there. Um, yeah.
that starts to touch on an, another theme that I've kind of got on my my list of and I wrote it in the event of this this idea that you are the you are the gift like and so it, it could be in this case like wow I've the fear I feel this fear of abandonment or I feel this need for you or and that was another thing that clicked for me in, in recent years of just like, I can't, like who I am in my core has to be enough for the person I'm with. And actually, in fact, that's actually the thing that they're drawn to in their, in their essence. And all the mechanisms within us are kind of saying the opposite inside of us because it's like our, our worst sides like we there's so many it's conditioning to not show that and 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 our not showing those parts is often what can cause a disconnect and i don't think this links exactly to what like this is this isn't answering you anymore like this is moving on to this other theme but that that like grokking like landing in that that like now relationship it's like the real gift is my raw humanity or in all of its and it's learning to hold all those parts in a in a mature as way as possible so that there's not an implicit like they have to do something for me And then linked to that idea was another thing that just landed for me at some point was this, this sense that it was a meme and it was like, she wants to give you everything. And you could change it to he, he wants to give you everything or they, they want to give you everything. It's like, oh, what, what people really want is to just be able to love you as you are. And they want to give everything they've got. And that like just shifted my mind out of scarcity or something. I'm like, wow. They might not live up to that all the time, but their deepest aspiration is 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 that depth of love of you as you are. Yeah, I, I so double. It's like part of me wants to be so hard and part of me wants to just be totally unconditionally loving. And like the hardness is daddy's not coming, mommy's not coming, like it's gone. Those needs aren't going to be met like a child's needs could be met. And all of those needs are just incredibly beautiful and the 
like an integral part of your raw humanity that makes you lovable. Something, um, it feels like it's a vulnerability about those needs that make me lovable. When I don't have the vulnerability connected to those needs, I'm not as lovable. I'm not as approachable or lovable. Yeah. But the vulnerability opens that door for connection. And then I can find the beauty of our needs. So I really like what you said there, John, about accepting that part, the small child who wants to be loved and seeing that need is beautiful without, get, without getting captured by it, without like um, disappearing into it, but being able to hold it yourself and, and seeing the beauty in that need or that part without being totally taken away by that part. And that's the, the exercise, I think, of, yeah. Being with it, maybe talking about it, saying now it's here, now the little girl who wants to be loved is here, but not being 100% engulfed by it. Yeah. So containing it. and trying to lead yourself to get those needs met from an adult place. Either, either meeting the need, that need yourself or asking like, oh, can you hold me? Like, I just would love to be held now for 20 minutes. But not demanding it and not being crushed if you can't have it. So you really need to, to be able to hold it somehow in yourself. It's like a ma mature vulnerability. And not shaming that part. Yeah. That links to another theme of own all your desires, own everything you want, ask for everything you want, lead yourself to get everything you want at all times in your life and relationship. Not just for you, but for your partner as well. How does that one land for people? Yeah, thank you, John, for mentioning that. And I also want to thank Camilla for what you were just saying. Because I notice when I ask, when I can feel clearly what I want, and I ask this as well, um, without um, bothering about the outcome. 
that works so well for me. So, yeah, so when I ask, when I feel clearly, this is, this is what, can you please just hold me? And the other one says, yes, of course, that's beautiful. And the, the other one says, no, I cannot right now, but that's just as perfect. And I can completely, yeah, maybe I feel tears, but that I, yeah, that I can still hold myself in that. This can, for me, this can be as healing as the hug that I could have received. Exactly. I share that experience and I, I have a practice that I want to do with you all based on exactly, exactly that. But before I speak about that, is, is there more, more that wants to be shared on just what's been covered and where, where we are now? Maybe something on like, like learning to want. Like I'm very, very rarely in in touch with with what I want. Mm. Um, yeah, it feels very difficult for me. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a question I've been holding. Like I often lie in bed in the morning and I'm like, what do I want? Like, can can I come up with like things I want? And it's still very difficult. Um, yeah, in sort of all domains, really. I want to just appreciate that and kind of piggyback on it because it actually speaks to what I wanted to say too. Um, there's this quote that's just been with me kind of this whole time. This Adam Phillips, a British psychoanalyst and essayist, he says, we have relationships not to get our needs met, but to discover what our needs might be. And I, I had this experience yesterday in a circle where I realized sort of retrospectively what I was actually needing or wanting. And so it's sort of in that vein of what you're talking about, uh, Stephanie. Um, like the challenge of, as you bring this piece, John, like the challenge for me of, yeah, like knowing, knowing what I want, do I always know? Even when I think I know, is there something deeper? And then there's a, there's a self-trust thing that comes up around that like the questioning of how much I can trust myself. So, yeah, that's here. It, it's nice hearing you both speak to that because like I never used to have any needs or wants and I had a whole pride based identity of like, well, I don't need that. And like my ego gratification was based around my lack of needs and how strong I was and, um, and that gradually got shattered by me following my attractions and loves. <laughs> it took incredible forces for that to get shattered. Like I just remember when I started to discover my needs and at first I was like loving it. And then it was absolutely terrifying because it was like, like, well, how, what if I can't get this need met? It's like, it's a need. Like I really need it met and I don't know how to get it met. And, and in that moment, it really made sense why I had these mechanisms set up to avoid me from that vulnerability because it was terrifying. And my, my identity was not the kind of person that has to call someone up and say, can I come sleep at your house tonight because I cannot be alone tonight. And that's what I actually did and, it, and I got met in that need and it was, it was so confronting for me. So that feels important to like have a sense of like, oh yeah, maybe if it is really hard for me to access my needs and wants, maybe I've, I've got some mechanisms in place that I could start to realize like maybe pride identity or other things might be ways in. Or like just noticing subtleties of like, of what happens with you in connection and like, maybe even just journaling by yourself like if i could have anything i wanted and the world was a lucid dream for me in my lucid dream and i could have anything i wanted i imagine you two could actually come up with some things that you would like
and then it's a matter of like, okay, how can I align with those things? John, how do you define what a need is? Because I talk to people about this sometimes and they'll say, oh no, I need water, but I don't need something from a person. And I don't know exactly how I define it. Can you say more? Um, I think, yeah, I think it's like there's some scramble around like what is a need, I think, versus just a desire. I think um, I think there's ways that something can be a need, and when we bring an adult presence to it, it can just become a desire. Like we can, and in, in some ways, for the purpose of this theme that we're exploring now about, like going, like always owning what we want, always leading ourselves towards what we want. It doesn't matter if it's a need or a desire. It's just like this is something that matters for you. It could be sexual or non-sexual, like all of this stuff applies like across the mains or like it's just. I am wondering where you're left now having heard that. So a desire works in place of it. It, it, could, it could be that a need becomes a desire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know if, if you have ways of avoiding certain needs from yourself or if you're mature and your needs turn to desires, like it might be a mix of both. Probably a mix, but I think sometimes I don't. Yeah, maybe I'm in Stephanie's camp of not sure if I'm always identifying them. Like, like I'll have an idea, but maybe it's, I'll, I'll say, oh, but I don't need that. So there's a little more clarity. <laughs> but then it's like, oh, I don't know if that's really a need. Yeah, my, my intuition is starting to say now that you're good at not needing your needs. You're, you're good at not needing certain things. Mm. But there's a cost to that. I guess I think that my needs are anything that really nourishes me on any level about anything. It could be a need for beauty. So a painting's on the wall would meet a need of mine. But it isn't this, you know, narrowly defined thing. For me, it's, it's very broad. Anything that, that makes, makes me feel alive or nurtures me. And I may have a lot of different strategies to get them met. Hopefully, that will give me some flexibility. Are you ready for a practice? It's going to be a, a two headed practice with the same person. So the first practice will just be connection based so it's a, it's a chance for you to explore how it is to come into close connection with someone else given all the themes that have uh, been been spoken about so it's, it's going to be a, a basic circling practice for those of you who are familiar with circling 
and I'll put you into pairs and you'll just spend the first 30 seconds to a minute just being in silence, exploring how it is for you to be with someone else. So it's a chance to, to get quite intimate with yourself while you're in connection with someone else. Like, yeah, what's, what's it like for you being in, in intimacy? We've been talking about the territory and now you're going to go in, go into it. And after a minute or so, you can share from the moment, like real time, what's happening for you. So you, you could use a sentence stem. I'm noticing like, I'm noticing I feel pleasure in my legs. So you, you just reveal yourself in the moment and your, your partner hears you and then whenever they feel called to, just to share without explaining or justifying or anything, just like, oh, I'm feeling, feeling open right now. And you just continue like that. So it's just a practice of sharing your, your present moment experience in as little words as you can. Is that, is that clear? And then, and then I'll come, you'll come back in and then there'll be a second practice with the same person that I'll explain after this first practice. Do we share back and forth? Yeah. yeah. Only share when you feel called, yeah. And will you give a signal when now the first part is done and you start the next? Or we'll um, start? I'll bring you back in after five minutes. So, so we uh, time with ourselves in the beginning. It's 30 seconds. Oh, so yeah, you just, you stay in silence for, you keep that time of roughly 30 seconds to a minute in silence. Yeah, you, you judge that for yourself. And then start to share and then I'll bring you back in after five minutes and then I'll give you the next part of the practice. Okay. Any so just, just to be clear, do we just share like two minutes, two minutes or we just share however it comes? However it comes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you share whenever, whenever you feel called. And really listen to the other person, like really let yourself see what happens in you when the other person shares. Yeah. Good to go. We have one person without a video on. Catchy souls, are you able to put your video on for this? We need video is needed for this practice. I think Kachi Souls and Kachi Mina Mina is the same, right? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> right. Um, so there'll be one group of three. So you can do this exercise just the same in a three. Just checking that no one's super triggered or um, found a romantic partner or something like that. <laughs> this, this next part is uh, uh, links to what? Is it Eva? Yeah what Eva was sharing. 
it's it's a practice of owning your wants and desires or needs even more more wants longings desires in real time in the moment and holding them in a like first of all having a coat well first of all seeing if you if they exist for you or not which might you might spend the whole time just in an inquiry to see if they exist or if anything exists which is fine if they do exist it's then having the courage to show it and then it's once you share it with your partner the idea with this practice is that there's then a that your partner leaves a bit of time for you to be in the the wanting without you knowing if they're going to actually meet that need or that desire or not so you the, your partner once you've shared something that you're wanting from your from your partner ideally the partner then leaves a little bit of time and actually starts to feel into like is this something that you would want to give um it could be like oh I'd, i would love to just have you um ask me about how this is going for me or i'd love you to just extend like an energetic hug towards me or something like that so you share what it is that you're wanting and then the partner feels into is this actually something that feels good for you to give or not so for you it's always it's a chance for you to stay true to yourself and for the person who's sharing the want and the need the, the the genius in this practice if it works is that sometimes just the very sharing of the desire and being in the unknown of whether it's going to be met or not is more satisfying than anything else that's what I started to realize when I started to get past my terror of going for these things was like, it felt so good just to own it in me. that it, it wasn't always important if the other person necessarily met the desire or not. Sometimes it still really was important, but other times not. And then if the other person does want to meet this desire, then you can just do it for a, a minute. And then it's the other person's turn. Or in this case, if, if, it's who, if the other person doesn't come up with something, then maybe you could have do a second one. Like it might not be easy to find. I'd, I've never done this online before. I'd, I think it should still work energetically the same online. So the practice is you go back in with your same partner and you just stay in silence and you, you, you inquire into, is there anything that you would want here and now with this person? So you can't know beforehand. It's actually something that will emerge if it emerges and then share it. And then there'll be a bit of time when you're, you're not knowing if it's going to be met or not. And then if it is going to be met, meet it. If it's a no, then it's okay. Restart the practice. Is that clear? Any questions? Really? Does this really land it in all its clarity? No, if you say, uh, if it's a no, you restart the practice, what do you mean? Basically, you just go back into silence together and Either one of you can again, if, if there's a new need comes up or a new want or a new desire, you, you would share it again. Either the same person, I mean, let the other person have, at least have a go. But if it's the same person because the other person doesn't, isn't coming up with anything, that's fine. And then if you do meet, if you do decide to meet that desire by say extending an energetic hug or whatever it is, then just do that for a minute and then again restart the practice after that back to either one of you like feeling into is there something you would like from this other person i'll give you six or seven minutes for this and if you need help you can uh, 
signal that, but you should be fine. Good to go. Could you share in the chat how you found that so we can all get a sense of the whole, how that went for everyone? That's nice. <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. Last, last shift of gears now to the, the, the final theme that I wanted to share. And that's to talk about um, our attachment dynamics, our, our need for secure attachment and need for contact and intimacy and closeness with people and also a need for individuation like how primarily important and fundamental they are and also how therefore how vulnerable they are and how vulnerable it is to be in real intimate connection um, something in me wants to like give this permission slip for how uh, just how vulnerable it can be it's it's like as my needs were hidden from me, so a lot of these these attachments dynamics were hidden from me. And it's been very humbling and quite shocking for me to realize like the, the depth of my avoidant uh, tendencies. And they still show up like all the time. And um, so I'm, I'm vulnerable and in those kind of things quite a lot of the time in my relationship and yet I, so it's kind of hard on the one side but then on the other side it's like it just feels like I'm left with this epic caring secure beautiful love and one of the exercises that kind of helped me to see that my attachment dynamics I, I would like to share with you it's it's pretty confronting. Um, I was a bit worried like to do this with you. Like I wanted to feel the group to see, <laughs> um, I thought it was suitable. And I haven't actually led it before, but I want to try it because it was really valuable for me. But I'll give you the, um, kind of the basis of the exercise, because I think it's understanding the basis is the most important so that you get what it's about. 
and the practice is where one person does your best to be a loving presence for the other. So the person who's receiving this loving presence gets to see what it's like for you to have this loving presence towards you. And for me, it was quite confronting because straight away I was like, oh, I'm, I'm ignoring it. <laughs> like, there it is. I could actually s almost see the love coming towards me and I'm diverting it away from me. <laughs> So that was like, oh, here's my avoidant attachment. But then the next part of the practice is after you've been giving that loving presence, the person who's giving the loving presence just turns away from you. So it's like suddenly what was that beautiful? Yeah, Benesh seems to be reacting that if you're sensitive to your nervous system, it should do some things to you. Uh, yeah. They just turn away and, and then you get to be, be in the experience of that. And don't, don't do this exercise. Like, I think we only have time for one of you to do this. And if neither of you want to do it, that's fine as well. So don't do this exercise if it doesn't feel like it's going to be empowering for you. Um, but that's basically it. It's like you getting to be with a loving presence and then a loving presence that goes away and, and noticing what happens for you in, throughout that whole exercise can be insightful to, to learn better about your attachment dynamics. Any questions? Um, would, I'm trying to think if it's better to be with a new partner or same for this. This loving presence, is that just in presence or with words or signs or it's not it, clear yeah m m mainly in silence it, it might lead to some words but um like follow your intuition with that but but mainly silence i'll put you into new groups so you've got a bit of time just to to meet each other to feel each other and then see who wants to do this, assuming that one of you does, or both of you do in, in the right roles. Maybe you, if you don't, then you can have some discussion around it. And then give it a go, give, give roughly a, a minute's loving presence. And then from that loving presence, just really move your energy away and stay like that for 30 seconds. So it can be all done in silence. I'd suggest like silence is your basis and maybe you, you get this intuition that it actually helps to add some words. So I'll leave that to you. And then after the 30 seconds, then there can just be some sharing of how it was. So roughly 90 seconds presence. I'll, I'll give you it all. A minute to get clear on who's doing what, 90 seconds to do the loving presence, 30 seconds to move away. I'll give you these timings and messages and then a minute to discuss how it was. Any questions? Sorry, John, the moving away is done by the same person's person who's showing loving kindness. Yeah. Okay. So not no changing of roles. It's just one way.
We're actually at time now in case anyone needs to leave. <clears throat> I'm happy to stay a little bit longer um, to hear any reflections of that exercise or of the session in general, either on text or spoken. I, I actually, oh, sorry, Stephen, were you about to say something? Okay. Um, I, I didn't share it just now, but just in look, looking back, I, I realized uh, there was a moment where I was very much surrendering into this love and just also for myself feeling as much love as possible. Um, and I was actually afraid of, of scaring my practice partner. Um, yeah, and, and almost like looking for, oh, is my practice partner already retreating a little bit because it's, it's scary. And, and in that I also, yeah, I already stopped myself a bit into really, uh, yeah, I almost say throw myself off a cliff, <laughs> but yeah, to really, um, yeah, feel that love entirely and fully. It's awesome to hear like those those fundamental kind of dynamics, getting awareness on them. I have the feeling, I mean, I did this exercise with Ashley. Um, Ava is talking. <laughs> um, and I felt, I sometimes find it difficult to receive, but I felt she was really containing. And then I noticed I find it more easy. Like when someone is really just giving, then I find it more, yeah, difficult to receive. Yeah, but I, I have the feeling it has to do with a tendency that I also know from the past that's a difference from when I'm, how can you say, contained or, you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm just because it's overflowing here, I give or I give because I actually maybe want to receive something from there. very interesting such a short exercise <laughs> i realized i was i was receiving and i felt a lot of tension like i had to fulfill some expectancy of like pleasing the other who wants to send me something and then when the other turned away i felt relief <laughs> <laughs> to be just by myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> Short-term relationships. What what I'm hearing from both Ava and, and you is like, well, first of all, like who know is 
just because the exercise said give a loving presence was it actually a loving presence that was coming or was there other things hidden in it and just just starts to speak to the complexity of these dyna dynamics and like this thing of like how our past experiences could shape us to like think that something negative is coming with love when actually it's not so like how important it can be to realize like oh yes yeah, some of the love i received was a bit tainted so now i think everything's tainted to make sure but then it can be the opposite that it's like oh my intuition's telling me that this is tainted so i should actually have a boundary but i don't because i learned to just take it and now i'm taking it now and like that's so it's like these the complexity of these dynamics is, is what makes this so so vulnerable and and beautiful or like so why why insights on, on at this level can like really help us realign our life and relationships in ways that are way more loving and um, rewarding I noticed when I turned away from my partners that um, I suddenly felt responsible for them. I felt like, oh my gosh, are they okay? What are they doing? Do they need something? I felt like instant responsibility. <laughs> really. I, I don't think it was them, it was me. But, you know, strange and revealing. <laughs> yeah, good hearing this. I, I uh, really needed a, a few minutes to regulate after you turned away, John. It's like I was glowing and my whole system and my heart was beating. It, it struck me by surprise and wow, this is such a deep impact. Like, wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah I, was, I was glad I noticed or that you signaled or something. It's like, yeah. Thanks for your participation in this session. It's really, uh, really feel you've all added to what what this was. Anything in in closing that you'd like to share or or type? Me. Yeah. I'm interested in your experience of the day, of the session. I'm just watching my attachment dynamics with you all right now. <laughs> I <don't> need. <laughs> it, it felt very rich for me, like, uh, I feel like journaling now, like more insights will come from what was so rich. Yeah. Yeah, I think I want to add that. Yeah. It's true for me too, Benny. I'm going to go journal. I feel like I'm only here with half a tank right now. There's been a lot happening today, but I feel like some insights have started to roll and I want to, I want to I fell in love with circling again, again, again. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, I really feel, um, I mean, the these sessions were meant to be like a kind of taster, but I, I can all, I can really feel like the longer workshop on this, on this theme, like 
I imagine I'll create in coming days. So, yeah, I feel very happy to share this stuff and for you guys to go in like this. Hmm. Grateful to you, John. Thank you. I had an image of like the good shepherd, the shepherding his sheep, <laughs> guiding but not too roughly, you know. I like how you did it. Thank you. I'll send you the recording. Yes, really nice to share with you all. Much love. I'm going to end the session. Bye.